As the culture turns, as the culture turns, oh my God. as the culture turns. I know they trying to knock me down, I ain't going out. As the culture turns, it's drip like a fool. Whoa. I know they trying to knock me down, I ain't going out. With your black. Uh, Fuck watching for the ops to be the cops to get you hit. Uh, I just ride up off the porch. Mama said, stay up out the mix. Uh, Niggas up when I was broke. They left me down on my dick. They let me down, down. Now I'm I won't be around now. I fuck this bitch, take her to Pow Town. When I was broke, they used to lie to me. My dad thought it was a tragedy. His man thought it was sad to see. Uh, you smoking the ops like a bag of weed. Like weed. And I bled. Get you hit. <laughs> bitch, we gon' get you first. All right, so what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to As The Culture Turns. My name is Jameer. I'll be your host for today's episode. Now, before I get into who my guest is, I want to make sure that you all uh, subscribe to As The Culture Turns on YouTube. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and you like us on Facebook. All righty? So now, I want to give my guest the opportunity to uh, introduce himself. So um, for those who may not know you, can you tell us who you are? Where you from and what you do? So pretty much my name is Rashad Calhoun. I'm from Chester, PA. Um, I go by the name of Dejar. Um, I'm a celebrity fashion designer and wardrobe stylist. And my brand is Dejar by Rashad. All righty. Okay. So <laughs> we know that you just went through, not went through, but, you know, just experienced a lot this past weekend. And we're going to touch on right. that towards the end of the episode. But I want to okay. take people on a journey with me so they can get to know who you are. Right. The man behind exactly. Dejar. Okay. okay. So perfect, the first perfect, perfect. person... There we go. So the first question I want to ask you is, um, how did you um, first get interested in fashion? Like who or what inspired you to get into fashion? Well, pretty much uh, when I was like 12 and 11, I always had like a style of uh, artistic ways. Like I used to draw on clothing and, you know, uh, draw like uh, dis- different action figures and what different clothing and this and that. Then um, when I turned the age of uh, 14, I wanted to save the money to get uh, my first sewing machine. So pretty much... Um, I had this one lady that made clothes uh, teach me how to just thread it. And once that, it, it, it was a wrap. I taught myself pretty much everything I do now. You know what I mean? I had no schooling, no classes. Everything just came from the muscle. I just can look at something, then just go on with it. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. So you were pretty much self-taught. Pretty yeah. Much. Yeah. Yep. That's good. That's yeah. good. All right. All right, so um, now I know that a lot of us um, that's locally from our city of Chester, you feel me? Mm-hmm. We, a lot of us know you um, right. originally from um, designing prom dresses right. and doing proms because you are known as the prom bully, which I got on right. the screen right there. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I want to uh, show a few pictures on the screen of like the different okay. things you design for proms. Okay. Right now. All right. So um, and then as the picture's coming up, you can, you know, I want to know like your inspiration or like, you know, behind this well, design. Well, pretty much, uh, I let most of my clients, well, because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's their big moment. So they usually come with, with, you know, tell me what ideas and stuff like that. So this is pretty much all of them. This right here in the red is actually my cousin. Um, she gave, gave me a style, and uh, pretty much I just ran with it. You know, she wanted something dramatic and different. That's what we went for. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> so is it more so of them, like, describing it to you and you bringing it to life, or do they, like, sketch yeah. it out or bring it? Or is it, like, pretty, uh, pretty Right. Uh, so I don't sketch like other designers do anymore. Um, pretty much my clients, you know, come with like different pictures of like different ideas of dresses. Like some might come with like a top of one dress or a bottom of one dress. And then we just, you know, put it together and then I add my own twist to it. You know what I mean? Usually they give me my own leeway to, you know, 
you know, make a masterpiece and add my twist. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> Uh, that's what's up, man. Listen, that right there is a talent, and that's a talent yeah. that um deserves to be recognized because you. you know I'm I'm guilty of this. I will definitely just slap my logo on something, you know. Mm -hmm. However, you know, you, yeah, yeah, definitely not wrong with that. But you go, yeah. uh, you, you take it a step further, obviously, because you mm -hmm. know you create pieces and different things right. like that. Yeah. So my next question is: so we know you from doing like the proms and like a lot of like local. Stuff at mm -hmm. first, you know, you mm -hmm. like people events, whether it's their weddings, graduations, right. whatever. So, mm -hmm. when did that transition happen from you doing like kind of just local things, and then you try you you getting into like public figures and celebrities? Right, right. Um, I say my first celebrity client was uh Rain Pryor. She's she, um she's the daughter of Richard Pryor. He was like a big time comedian back then. Um, I had got a call from this uh, styling team in Delaware. Um, it was a hairstylist, a makeup artist, and they were looking for a clothing designer. So they wanted to reach out to me to give me the opportunity to style her in New York. Um, she had a big event with Whoopi Goldberg at the Apollo. Um, Whoopi Goldberg had a red carpet event with tons of billionaires and celebrities. And I actually got to style her for that and also um, for episode um, on HBO about her life. So it was like pretty much like an all weekend thing. So after that, it's just like a word of mouth. All right, there we go. Well, that's pretty good. And um, I got um some pictures of other celebrities you also designed for as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want to know um again as the pictures come up, or I'll mm -hmm. even just ask you like how did that come about, or right. how did this you know connection happen? So first, okay. I got well, I, I could kind of guess how this one probably came about. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I can guess. So for those who may not know, this is Rondé, and he's a mm -hmm. basketball player. Um. I forgot which team he played for. Is it the Toronto right now? Yeah, you're Toronto. Yep, yep. At, at, at this Toronto. time, he, he was playing with the uh, Brooklyn Nets, and he actually brought the Nets out to the show. So how this happened was, so Rondé, you know, he's my blood cousin. Um, and the week before Fashion Week, um, he hit me up like, "Yo, cuz, you don't know Fashion Week in New York?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yo, let me walk for you." I'm like, "All right, cool." So I called the producers. They got they got excited, you know, pull all the stops out on this net and called the photographers and media. They all came out. Um, he actually brought you know some of the team members and. It was amazing, you know. What I mean, he killed it. I mean, that was his first big show. He killed it, you know. It was just dope, you know. Me and him being a part of something together, he, you know. He did back squat after fashion. It was a dope, uh, you know, collab. And after that, we wound up, you know, working on a magazine that he was on the front cover for that I styled him for as well. So it was dope. That's good. And um, can I just um get from you how much did that mean to you, even to both of y'all, but for him to reach out and you know, obviously lend his platform or you know, right. Hit you know his status and you know yeah. to lend it to you because not to discredit you because you doing your thing too you feel me yeah. but how did that feel to have someone actually um embrace you as opposed to right. like you know shitting on you right right it was a dope feeling you know what I mean um out you know outside of us being family um it, it was just a dope that he stepped out of his craft of what he was doing in the NBA he could be doing anything else in the world but he wanted to collab with me and it was dope you know putting our our artistries together you know what I mean and you know he him coming out and his team supporting this and that it was just dope. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next picture I have. All right, so we got Lamar. Oh, yeah. Odom. <laughs> yeah. So I definitely want to know how did this come about, and I know this was for his boxing match, but well, you can tell the story. So how yeah. did this come about? So pretty much, um, celebrity boxing is like a big thing. Um, me and the owner Damon, a uh, filming is like real, real cool. So um, I want to be a designer for certain stuff for other like the other fighters throughout the years. Then I want to become a fighter myself. Um, three years ago, I want to fight in um a guy from MTV Catfish, uh, Nick DiDonato from Philadelphia. And um, it was a great fight, this and that. So uh, pretty much after that, I just became more a family up to the celebrity boxing uh, franchise, if you will. And then um, the owner wound up calling me like, yo, Rashad, uh, we need you. Um, Lamar Odom is coming. We sign him on, you know, for a big fight. You know what I mean? We'll pay you whatever. We need you to have him in the best type of dope shit, pretty much. You know what I mean? He's like, look, you know what I mean? He went orange. Um, I mean, he wants a purple and a yellow. Go him in. So I did it. I met Lamar Odom that morning of the um fight. He loved it. And then it, it, it was just dope. You know, I mean he he won a winning. He was fighting Aaron Carter, which is um uh Nick from the Backstreet Boys brother. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was dope. Yeah. I get that. And um I'm gonna I'm gonna save this question after I show uh the rest of the celebrities and you you can answer it or not. Okay. I think you answered it. <laughs> All right, so uh, the next one. Um I don't Exactly know her name, but I actually did interview one of her castmates from the TV show she's on. So could you just give us insight on who she is? I know she's from oh, yeah. Atlanta. Right. So this is a beer. Um, it was weird how me and her met because well, actually we didn't actually never met in person at all, at all. 
So it's crazy because like my cousin Raina, she's like a big time PR um, out of the Philadelphia area, but she wanted to move into ATL a couple years ago. Down there popping, she works with uh, you know Black Ink, uh, like the franchise of this and that. So she wanted to linking me up with her. She was looking for um, a stylist to style it for the for the reunion um, of the show, um, the Little Women of Atlanta, and she reached out to me. Um, my cousin put us together. I got her measurements through the phone. We made her a, a long video call. She's a great person, real dope personality. And then I wound up making an outfit in one day, sending it to um, L.A. She tried it on. It was perfect. <laughs> but I mean, never even meeting her in person. <laughs> <laughs> and you still never met her in person a day right. to this day. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I interviewed Miss Juicy. I didn't meet her in person e either. So I get yeah. it. You know, it was just like I got right. to ask her a quick few questions and everything. Now, um, mm -hmm. my question now with that, now that's a challenge because we obviously know that she's a little woman, you know. Mm -hmm. Now... When approaching, you know, um, dressing someone like that, um, is it similar? Because you know, I'm trying to say this in the most correct way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar to like, mm -hmm. you know, um, like dressing a child, or I should shout out, shall I say? Actually, like, how do you approach it? Is it like still just see, like a grown woman? See, uh, see, me and her kind of made like kind of fun out of it because like, I'm like, well, well, we never met, so like, get measurements and that. She's like, well, just think about a grown lady, but just just cut it like a little shorter. I'm still the same thighs and this and that. All, you know what I mean? So, like, oh, all right, cool. All right, you know what I mean? It kind of uh, worked out, you know what I mean? So she made it kind of fun, easier for me to understand and how to do it. And it, it, this was actually my first time doing that. And it was uh, A+. plus. It was, like, awesome. It fit perfect. Exactly. And that's not your first time doing different shapes and sizes because you designed, I want to put right. out there that you designed for all shapes, all sizes of exactly. women or men. So yep. that was just yep. new territory for you to yep. conquer, basically. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. All right, there we go. All right, so the next one we got uh Mariah oh, Lynn from Love and Hip Hop, and um, oh, baby, yeah. explain this one. Right, so this was actually the first time I ever saw Mariah. Um, I was a part of the um casting to be extras for the Love and Hip Hop franchise for like a while, and then I always wanted to you know style her. So one day, um, I gave her a manager my number on set, and then he went and called me out of nowhere. Um, he said, "Yo, uh, bro, um, we." we we, we need you, Mar Mariah. You know, is um, performing for the powerhouse in New York um, for uh, the TV set. She needs an outfit for her and her two dancers. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, what's her size? They're like, bro, zero. She, she's small. All right, cool. So I wound up, um, they gave me color scheme to go with. They didn't give me no style. They just said, do you bring the outfits? And on top of that, I didn't know that they asked another designer too to come. So they bought an outfit that they made for them as well. So pretty much Mariah chose my look. And then after that, me and her were like locked in for like, couple years until you know like the show started dying down and then you know i started like doing other stuff but yeah like me and her was like locked in like heavy i mean we still cool you know what i mean so it was yeah, dope that's, uh, yeah and yeah. i told you about the experience where um i actually was in the same section with her at jason lee park right so she's definitely yeah. cool i was so drunk i didn't yeah. realize it was, it was her at first but that's what's yeah. up <laughs> so uh, my next question is because it do seem like sometimes um a lot of people may hit you up in the spur of the moment type of thing, or you know they may hit you up from the very beginning. Um, when it comes to the spur of the moment type of calls, like how quick do you normally like how quick do your turnovers normally got to be? Like, is it sometimes like the day before, like uh the same day? Like how yeah. How often does that happen? And um, do you appreciate it? happens pretty that? much like all the time. Like with celebrities, like you really don't know of what in advance. You know what I mean? Like everything's like last minute. So when I got the call to um, address um, Corinne Hartone from The Voice, she's a gospel singer for the Grammys, I literally had one day. Like I got the call from her stylist out in ATL, which name is uh, Troy Clinton, my boy that put me on a styling. Um, he was like, yo, um, I need you for a dress. I need some glitter glam. You know what I mean? This is something big, whatever, whatever. Um, I need this dress like done today and shipped out today. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, the, like the Grammys were this Sunday. It was like Thursday. So I said, all right, cool. Give me a couple hours. The store opened at, at, at 10 o'clock in the morning. I was there at 9.55. Got the fabric, came back, cut it. He sent me all the measurements once again. And when she got it, it was perfect. It was like perfect. Nothing need to be altered. It was just, it just was dead on. You know what I mean? Then you know, uh, she graced red carpet, killed it. It was amazing. That was yeah. yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And and I know for me, I'm sometimes a person where sometimes I like a little, you know, to work a little under pressure. You know, yeah, me too. Yeah. Like, I like a little, yeah, like my best work does happen that yeah. way. You know, 
So I do like that a little bit. So you work well under pressure. I could get from that. Yeah. Um, also, right. I want to put this up right here. Um, and oh, yeah. explain, explain who this right here is. And actually, this is an, another client of Troy Clinton. Um, he styles her too. She's from um, Atlanta. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, Marriage Huntsville. Um, her name is Melody. And she's like popping artist, mother, realtor out in that area, you know what I mean? So yeah, I got to style her for that. So I literally had like two days to make this. And he actually flew down here to actually help, uh, you know, help me finish it up. And then he, he, he went back to Florida tour for the uh, actual set. This actually was on the season um, of uh, one of their episodes, which is dope too. Yeah. All right, that's what's up. All right, that's what's up. That's what I'm talking about. And that's good. It must be, feel good to see your work. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm pretty sure it's good to see it locally in person, but the good good to see it like all around the world. Exactly, you know, exactly. TV yeah. And right. places like that. And mm -hmm. now my next question for you is because while all that may be good, um, I see you on social media, and what may be a beautiful thing is that you also get to dress your children. You know. Oh yeah, 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 now, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think that's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing because number yeah. one. Um, you may know growing up, you know, a lot of us probably didn't come from much, you know, a lot of us right. had hand-me-downs, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, clothes that probably wasn't as new. So mm -hmm. how does it feel to be able to, number one, um, design for your children and right. number two, you know, just to be able to, um, bring anything that they may want to life, whether it's right. now right. at their ages or, you know, when they become older and go to prom and all that stuff. Right. Pretty much. I think it's a, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's fun. It's, it's always amazing, you know, being a father and a, and a parent. So pretty much with that, like, it's like my kids, like, they just love everything I do. So every time I'm making clothes, like, they just be watching me. I say, oh, my God, Dad, we, I'm, I love that. They, like, give me my, my push, you know what I mean? Even though I'll be in my head, like, oh, my God, like, I got to finish this and that. They push me, you know what I mean? And then my daughter, she's like a superstar. She just loves everything fashion and glitz and glam. So when I have, like, little fabric left over from other clients, so I'm like, Dad, can you make me a jacket out of that? So I got to make her a jacket all the time and a skirt and a dress. And yeah. <laughs> so it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. That's what's up. They look like little models in the makeup. Yeah. You know? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what's up. That's Thank what you. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And Thank I had you. another picture. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look at it right now. I think I, it was one of you and your wife as well. So I yeah. uh, left that one out. I ain't mean to, but. That's dope, mm -hmm. though. You know, like Thank that you're you. able to, you know, do that for sure. So yeah. now I want to get um to the next part, and you kind of alluded to it um mm -hmm. about Fashion Week. All right, so right, right. I know, and I want you to explain to the audience, you know, um the different Fashion Weeks you've done because I know you've been to New York, you've been to right. Paris, but you can explain right. it. So could you just right. give us a rundown how that goes and everything? Yeah, so um, pretty much uh Fashion Week um in any city or any state is pretty much like um. Super Bowl for a fashion designer. Um, it's twice a year, um, spring, summer, fall, winter. Um, it gives us, us uh, our, our, our time at the end of the year um, to show, you know, what we've been working on or and who we are as a person and, and a brand, you know what I mean? So pretty much like when I have like clients all year round um, having me doing stuff for them, but this, this is what they want, you know what I mean? This is their vision. So by us doing Fashion Week, this is our time to show our vision of, you know, who we are and, you know, what we're about. So it's a fun thing. I've been to Paris Fashion Week, London Fashion um, Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week. Um, just got back from Atlanta Fashion Week too. Um, I did Philadelphia Fashion Week, Delaware Fashion Week. So yeah, 